זה מגילה, פרק א', שפטר 11, I mean, uh, משנה 11. כבר הזכרנו בהקדמה למשנה הקודמת, or we already covered yesterday in the previous משנה, שבזמן שעמד המשכן בשילה, that as long as the משכן stood in שילה, נאסרו הבמות. One was not allowed to bring sacrifice on a personal um, altar. והיו כל הקורבנות קרבי, קרבים על המזבח של המשכן. And all the sacrifices were had to be brought to the, to the tabernacle, to the mishkan, to the place, to the temple. כמו במקדש בירושלים. In other words, it was just like in Yerushalayim. So you would think they're the same, שילה in Yerushalayim. משנתנו בא ללמד שמכל מקום יש הבדל בין משכן שלו למידה של שלהם. Again, we're going to have the same street trade. They're exactly the same, except. The same. Just to clarify, a guy at that time wanted to eat meat. Does he have to go to the Mishkan to do shecht or he shecht it his house? He shecht it, yeah, he shecht it his house. Just when he wants to... To bring a sacrifice. Yeah, but think the mindset. Most people, most people, If they would live close to Yerushalayim, they would never shecht meat for eating um, just for the jazz, because they have an opportunity to eat a sacrifice. So they would... It's much higher. It's much higher. So if you lived far away, yeah, yeah you right. would do that. But if you'd have, if you'd be in the neighborhood, most people, it, it just makes sense. Because if you, if you bring a peace offerings, you get 90% of the meat anyway. So you might as well give a little bit to the coin. With, yeah. And you got, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And Ben Shilo, there's no difference between Shilo, Bezman She Amad Shama Mishkan, at the time that the Mishkan stood there, Le Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, Bezman Bet HaMikdash. So what's the difference? Ela She Be Shilo Ochlim Kodashim Kalim. In Shilo, you would eat The lenient sacrifices, there were some sacrifices which were more severe and some sacrifices which were more lenient, which means some sacrifices you could eat out of the temple, some sacrifices you have to eat within the temple ground. There were many rules, yeah? So the lenient sacrifices, Kodeshikim, Kegon Toda, Shlamim Vepesach, for example, the sacrifices of thank offering, the peace offering, and the Pesach offering, Umaaser Sheni, And also the, tech, the second tithe, or the second tithe, uh, the, the tithe that you would bring food to Yerushalayim and you'll have to eat it in Yerushalayim, because they were already obligated that, because the land was already divided. So in Shiloh, as long as you were within sight of the temple, you were allowed to eat it. בכל מקום שרואים משם את שילה. In every place you would... Those sacrifices, yeah. Yeah, you would, you would, you can eat it as... But you can see it. ויש מפרשים, בכל הרואה, בכל מקום שרואים משם קצת מבית השם. So some, there's two explanation. Either the place you see the city שילה, or the place you see the tabernacle שילה. Yeah? Doesn't matter. ודרשו דין זה ממה שנאמר, and how do they learn this? Because there's a verse that says, הישמר לך, it says you have to guard, פן תעלה עולותיך בכל מקום אשר תראה. It says, lest you're going to bring up your sacrifices in every place that you will see. Yeah, that's the expression. There's no expression for Yerushalayim. In every place, that the place that the God, God would choose, it always says. בכל מקום אשר תראה, In every place that you will see, אי אתה מעלה. You don't bring up, אבל אתה אוכל בכל מקום אשר תראה. So you don't, you're not allowed to bring the sacrifice in every place that you see. But you're allowed to eat the sacrifices in all the places that you see. That's how they learned it. And Yerushalayim, how does it work? In Yerushalayim and in Jerusalem, you do it לפנים מן החומה. You have to do it within the world city. You're not allowed to go outside of the city limits, which is the world city, in order to do it. In other words, Yerushalayim is more strict. You can't do it. Even if, the, if a far away place can see Bet Amikdash, Yerushalayim, you're not allowed to eat it. You have to eat it within the old city. 
אין אוכלים קדשים כאלה ממס השנים, אלא לפנים מחומות ירושלים. You have to eat it within the boundaries of the walls of Yerushalayim. וכאן וכאן, and in both of them, שילה אין ירושלים, בין בשילה ובין ירושלים, קדשי קודשים, the holy of holies, if you have sacrifices which are, for example, sin offering or guilt offering, those two, two things, נאכלים לפנים מן הקלעים. You have to eat it within, let's put it in modern day terms, within the temple grounds. You have to eat it within the temple grounds. You're not allowed to go out of the temple grounds, even into Yerushalayim. של המשכן בשילה, whether it is the temple in שילה, ולפנים מחומת האזהרה של בית המקדש. שאף חומת האזהרה נקראו קלעים. Or the walls of the temple itself, Yerushalayim. Another difference. קדושת שילה יש אחרי ההיתר, after שילה became a holy city, the altars became permitted again, כשחרבה שילה הותרו הבמות, כמו שהזכרנו בקדמה בשביל זה, כמו שהזכרנו בפור, וקדושת ירושלים אין אחרי ההיתר, but the holiness of Jerusalem, once the temple was moved to Jerusalem, even after the destruction, שאף לאחר שחרב המקדש, even after the destruction, לא היה עוד היתר הבמות לעולם. Um, the private altars never came back. They're not allowed to, since Yerushalayim was established as a holy state. Interesting that they didn't, after Shiloh was destroyed, why did they all come permit the bomot? It's like, you go down in Yerusha. After Yerushalayim, you can't, you can't do it anymore, ever. That's not looking. Mm-hmm. But then, you, they went down. Shiloh was considered, I, I know it sounds strange, but Gilgal, Nov, and Shiloh was considered like almost like in the desert. Okay, yeah, which means it, the place did not become holy. Okay. The ground is the ground not holy. The Yerushalayim, the ground itself became holy. That's why it was not allowed. That's right. Now, it wasn't as in the desert, because in the desert it was completely, but it was a little bit. 